Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So before we get into today's case, I wanted to go ahead and say a huge thank you to my patrons, Marquise, Carol, Megan, DB, and Vicky. Thank you guys so much for your support. Your support means so much more to me than you can ever know, and words cannot say how much I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Now, today's case is definitely a tough one. It is a little bit of a shorter case, but it's one that I think will start a very important conversation. This is a case that involves domestic abuse, so if that's a topic that's very triggering or sensitive for you, this video may not be for you. But with all of that being said, let's just get right into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the death of Alexander Artola. Alexander Artola was only 22 years old when he died on May 20th, 2019. He was originally from Cedar Grove, New Jersey, but went on to graduate from Regis High School in Manhattan, New York, then went on to study biochemistry at Boston College in Massachusetts. He worked so very hard while he was here. While attending college, he worked as a research assistant at the Brigham Women's Hospital in New York after finishing all of his classroom coursework. His professors described him as being a gifted student who was involved in many things on campus, such as the Philippine Society of Boston College, which is an organization that celebrates the beauty and richness of the Philippine culture. Family described him as being a driven, strong-willed leader who always had been so confident and very mentally healthy. He had just finished with all of his college college work and was set to graduate on May 20th, 2019. His family traveled up from where they were living in New Jersey to proudly watch their son receive his diploma from Boston College. At the time, Alexander was dating a young woman named In Young Yu. In Young was a native of South Korea and she was also attending Boston College and she was studying economics. She was also a part of the Philippine Society. She served as the group's treasurer in 2017, and the two had started dating in December of 2017. I honestly wish we knew more about the both of them because obviously they have important roles in this case, but not a lot has been published about their relationships with each other or even with their friends or family or anything else. So I'm not really sure if things between In Young and Alexander had always been really bad from the very start, or if it was more of a slow progression that led to all of this happening. Either way, according to a couple of their classmates, the two seemed to have a very toxic relationship. Those around them knew that their relationship was pretty bad, but no one could really predict how bad things truly were behind the surface. According to later court hearings, early in their relationship, Inyan had found out that Alexander had met up with his ex-girlfriend and he had been dishonest about it. It was after this that In Young seemed to get more insecure, so she became more controlling and more possessive over Alexander. This case has a lot of text messages. In fact, it's pretty much all based on the text messages that they sent to each other to sort of spell out how bad their relationship was and how this entire thing progressed. So for this video, I might be looking down a lot at my notes because I want to make sure that I read everything correctly and verbatim on what they said. Again, we don't have a lot of outside accounts to show their progression of their relationship, but we do have a lot of text messages in the weeks and days leading up to Alexander's death to kind of show how all of this happened. So because of this past incident with Alexander interacting with his ex-girlfriend, in Young became more obsessive and fixated on the possibility of him seeing her again at the graduation ceremony. So throughout the two months prior to Alexander's death, the two exchanged over 75,000 text messages, with 47,000 of them coming from In Young. Prosecutors went on to describe their relationship as an uneven power dynamic with In Young holding all of the power and Alexander sort of feeling submissive and small. So again, for the remainder of the video, I will be looking down at my notes just to make sure I read everything correctly and verbatim for what they said. So on April 1st of 2019, Alexander wrote in a text to In Young to say, you own all of me, only you. You have complete control of me emotionally and physically, and you dictate my happiness. You owning all of me includes everything, what I think, what I feel. You own all of that, all of my history, everything. Anything you want, I want to give it to you. Your happiness is my only priority. On April 11th, he texted her, in Young, please, I'll give you whatever you want. I'll leave this effing earth. Just please don't do anything to hurt yourself anymore. 
So please, I'll get out of your life. I'll go die if you want. I'll erase myself from this world. It'll probably be better off and I don't have anything anymore anyways if I don't have you. I'll go die. Please, I'll do whatever you want. You own me. I'll literally do whatever you want. Please just don't go effing hurt yourself anymore. Please, I'll go die for you. Whatever will make you happy. After this, there are several more instances of In Young threatening to take her own life or hurt herself to try and get Alexander to do whatever it was that she wanted him to do. There were also times where Alexander would tell her that he needed space or he needed to go to sleep after an argument. There were times that he wouldn't reply to her messages right away. All of these incidents just caused more and more anger in Aang Young and caused her to lash out even more. This all just kind of shows how Alexander felt the relationship really was. So a month later on May 16th, Aang Young texted Alexander, all it is gonna take at that graduation is for someone to come up to you and pull you aside or come running to you and hugging you, and you will just effing do everything again to disrespect me and break your promise. F you and go effing kill yourself and everyone in that toxic group, they all deserve to effing die. Then on May 18th, she texted him, you can't figure it out? You want to make me live it again? You want me to slash my throat? Is that what you want? Like, why do I have to threaten my own effing life for you to finally do something? Did I not effing tell you to read my text? Now, if you do not effing read it right now, I'm literally going to effing slash my throat and take a video saying it was because of you and that I want you to see it. Is that what you effing want, you idiotic, worthless effing shithead? Is that what you want? I have to effing threaten my life for you to listen to me. So you literally end up doing what I effing want at the end of the day, so why try to fight me? Again, so it's just another power dynamic. Her threatening to take her own life and then blame him for it publicly. So of course at this point, Alexander felt completely trapped. He felt like no matter what he did, she was going to hurt herself and it was still going to be his fault. He was afraid to end the relationship because of what she might do to herself. A friend said, quote, he felt trapped like he had no option but to stay with her because her life was literally in his hands. There was actually one point where Alexander texted a friend saying that he's worried, he needs help, and he can't do this alone. So this friend actually contacted the mental health emergency services at their campus, but they didn't do anything. The friend was told by them that there was no risk of immediate danger. According to Alexander's family, again, he had never shown any signs of poor mental health. He had always been very confident and mentally strong. So it wasn't until his relationship with Ing Young that he started to show these signs of deteriorating mental health. In his journal, he wrote, she attacks my self-worth. Whenever we argue, it always reverts back to the past and how I lied and hurt her before and how she doesn't believe that it won't happen again. Then when I agree to end it because she said she's done with me, I may quote, horrible R word F up. That is just a burden on everyone's life. She in turn threatens to kill herself because of me. So again, this is all just showing how much of an impact this relationship had on his mental health and how she was treating him and how he was responding. He felt trapped and he felt like there was nothing that he could do to get out of this. Everything came to a head on May 20th, 2019, just hours before he was supposed to walk across the stage, receive his diploma for all of his hard work and finally graduate from college. Alexander had his location turned off this morning and there's a series of text messages between Alexander and In Young from that morning. There are a ton ton of text messages. There's actually over a hundred, so just bear with me as I read through them all. They are as follows. Ing Young. Now, when I kind of pause, that means it's a separate text messages. So all of these text messages that she's about to send, they're all like separate one after the other. So Ing Young said, excuse me, why is your location not available? What are you doing? Where the expletive are you? Are you kidding? Really? You turn your location off? You were being sus as expletive when you left. I knew you were going to expletive see them. You thought you were being sly about it. You think I'm that dumb? You turn your location off at a time where it's not even possible that you make it to the parking lot then. So I wonder where you expletive went. Who do you run into or talk to? Whose room did you go to? 
Hello. Just expletive, own up to it like you said you would yesterday. So to me, this is showing that she's getting upset about something that had transpired the day before. Apparently him talking to someone or doing something that he said that he wouldn't. Maybe she thinks that he's going to do something that he said that he wouldn't on this day. I'm not exactly sure. So Alexander responded to all of the texts saying, I'm not talking to anyone. I won't ever again. I'm happy I got to spend my last night with you. I love you, Inyoung, until my last breath. That is all he said to her. And then Inyoung sent another series of texts. Then where are you? You don't respond to anything. I asked you why your location wasn't available. Are you kidding me? That's all you expletive say. And then Alexander responded to these text messages saying, I'm not going to be anywhere, Ing Young. This is goodbye forever. I love you. This isn't your fault. It's mine. Ing Young responds, what? What? You're leaving me? And then Alexander responds, I'm far away on a tall place and I'm not going to be here for long. And then he sends another text message saying, I'm leaving everyone. Ing Young responds with, Alex, what are you expletive doing? If you expletive love me, stop. If you ever expletive loved me, stop. Alex replied, I did love you, just not well enough. Ing Young replied with, you're gonna expletive leave me to nothing. Alexander replied, goodbye. Ing Young replied, stop. Alexander said, you'll have everything once I'm gone. After this, Ing Young texted Alexander 110 more times. So these are the following text messages that she sent, all pretty much separate without any response from Alexander. Please stop. Talk to me. Stop. Stop. Please. I'm crying. Please. Pick up. Please. Just pick up. Don't leave me like that. If you ever loved me, stop. If you want to show me you love me, stop. 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 Please pick up. Talk to me. Why do you never talk to me? Stop. What are you doing? Please, stop. I expletive love you. You can't leave me like this. Alex, Alex, please. Alex, I love you, please. Please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, please. Please, talk to me. I thought you loved me. I thought you expletive loved me, please. Why are you doing this? Please, please talk to me. Please, I'll come. Please, did you effing block me? Please, please, Alex, Alex. Please. I love you so much. Please. Please listen to me. Please. Please. Listen to me. Please. I love you, Alex. I'm not going to love anybody else. Please. Please, baby. I love you so much. Please stop. Please. Please, baby. Please stop. I love you. I love you so expletive much. I'm sorry. Please. Please be with me and love me forever. Please. 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 I love you so much. Please. Baby, please pick up. Please, baby, please pick up. I love you. Please pick up. Please. I'm begging you. Expletive. I love you. Please, please, please. I love you and only you. Please, please, Alex. Please. I'm begging you. Please. Please, baby, please. I'm begging you, please. I expletive love you. Please. Why can't we have our forever and always? Please. Please. Please, I need you. Please. I need you so much, please. I expletive love you like no expletive other, please. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry if I hurt you, please. Please be with me, my love, please. Expletive love me and be with me. I expletive love you, please. Please, I'm so sorry. I'm begging you, Alex, please. Can you wait for 20 minutes, please? Please, don't do this, please. I'm begging you, please. I can't live without you. Please, expletive, don't do this. Please, Alex, don't do this. I love you, baby, please. Please, baby. Expletive, please. Please, please. I love you so much, please. Don't do this, please. Please, I'm begging you, please. Baby, please, please, please. Baby, please. I expletive love you, please don't do this. Please talk to me. Please, baby, I'm almost there, please. Please don't push me away. Please don't leave me, please. Please don't leave me, baby, please. Please, please, please. I expletive love you, please. I'm almost here, please. Please see me and talk to me, please. Please, please, please. Please, baby, please. I'm begging you with my entire expletive life, please. Don't expletive leave me, please. I love you. I love you. I love you. I expletive love you. I expletive love you. Please, please, expletive. Please, Alex. 
I'm begging you. Please, I'm almost there. Please, where are you? Please, please, please. So those are all of the text messages from that day. At some point in all of this, Alexander turned his location back on, so In Young tracked him to the Renaissance parking garage near Northeastern University in Roxbury. So as she was texting him, she was taking an Uber to get to his location. As she was heading there, she also got into contact with Alexander's brother to share his location with him. At the same time, he also said that he was on his way to the parking garage to try and get to Alex. According to a witness who was close to the family, Inyoung arrived at the parking garage and found Alex still on the top floor of the parking garage. But when she arrived, I'm not sure exactly what happened. I don't know if they spoke spoke or if she actually saw Alexander standing there. I don't know if anything between them further happened and I don't know if she did say anything what was said. What we do know is that at 8.35 a.m., just two hours before his planned graduation ceremony, which was planned for 10.30 that day, Alexander had jumped off of the top floor of the parking garage, taking his own life. So instead of getting to watch their son graduate that day, Alexander's family was left with the abrupt reality that they now had to plan his funeral. Obviously, his family was and still is absolutely devastated at this abrupt, sudden loss. So by October of that year, Ang Young was actually arrested and charged with involuntary manslaughter. It wasn't totally clear by the articles that I read online, but at some point after dropping out of classes in August, Ang Young actually returned to South Korea for a while. There was a bunch of questions on whether they would have to extradite her back, whether they would have to go to South Korea and find her and force her to come back and face her charges. But after being indicted by a grand jury, she did voluntarily return to Boston to stand in front of a judge and plead not guilty to charges of involuntary manslaughter. But prosecutors in the case argued that Ang Young was physically, verbally, and psychologically abusive towards Alexander, which intensified in the days leading up to his death. The DA said that they were, quote, involved in a tumultuous, dysfunctional, and unhealthy 18-month-long dating relationship during which time Miss Yu engaged in deeply disturbing and at times relentless verbally, physically, and psychologically abusive behavior towards Mr. Ultrala. They said that Ang Young waged a campaign of abuse that stripped Alexander of his free will by repeatedly telling him to kill himself and then her threatening to kill herself if he didn't act accordingly to what she was telling him to do. They also brought up the fact that a lot of men who are being abused by their partner will not come forward to family, friends, or authorities because of the societal norms for them to not show their feelings to just push it down and to not see themselves as victims. A lot of people have also drawn parallels between this case and the case of Conrad Roy III and Michelle Carter, which also took place in Massachusetts. Stephanie Harlow actually made some amazing, very thorough and detailed videos about this case, which goes a lot into detail and deep dive into the mental health of both Conrad and Michelle in the years, months, and days leading up to Conrad's death. In this case, which took place in 2014, Conrad threatened to take his own life, and then as he was doing so, Michelle encouraged him to do it. He sat in his car and took his own life via carbon monoxide poisoning, and then when he got out of the car because he got too afraid and, you know, it was really happening, Michelle pressured him to get back into the car to finish the job. Then after he passed away, Michelle acted like she had no idea what happened to Conrad. Michelle was not actually present when Conrad died, but I do believe that she was on the phone with him when all of this happened and she encouraged him to take his own life. She too was arrested and charged with involuntary manslaughter in 2017 and was sentenced to 15 months behind bars. Right now, there's a new bill called Carter's Law, which is under under consideration in the Massachusetts legislature that would make coercing someone into suicide punishable by up to five years. However, In Young's defense argues that she is a wonderful young woman who has a lot of remorse and regret for what happened. They said that the both of them were in very fragile mental states, which allowed this to escalate the way that it did. The defense argues that In Young's case is not like Michelle's case. They argue that as soon as Inyoung understood what Alexander was about to do to take his own life, 
she did everything that she could to try and stop it. She texted him and called him repeatedly. She tried to figure out where he was and when she did, she rushed there to try and get him to stop. She even texted his brother in an attempt to get him to get over there to try and get him to stop. So I definitely can see parallels between the two cases, but I do tend to think that Michelle's case is a little bit more black and white. Conrad wanted to get out of the car, Michelle pushed him to get back in in that moment, while Aang Young did try to get him to stop him from taking his own life. But that does not make her innocent of any involvement. This clearly was a very toxic relationship for the both of them. He made a mistake and he didn't know how to make it up to her. But clearly it was something that bothered her to the point that she relentlessly brought it back up, made him feel bad about it, and wouldn't allow him any room for forgiveness. It clearly got to a point where he just felt trapped. He got to the point where he just wanted things to calm down, but he didn't know what to do. He wanted to make her happy. That's all he wanted, clearly by what he was saying, all he wanted in his life at that point was to make her happy. And she was making it very clear that there was no way he was going to do that. Whether he had his own issues or not, she did encourage him to kill himself. Even though she didn't necessarily do it that same day, that kind of abuse really sits with someone. If someone you love is constantly berating you and constantly telling you that you'd be better off dead and that there's nothing that they can do to make you happy and that everything they do is wrong, it will make you believe it yourself. He said it himself in his journal entry. He tried to get out of this. He tried to leave when she made it very clear that he would not be forgiven but that wasn't good enough for her. To me, she had all of the power and she knew it. She repeatedly beat him down to the point where he truly believed the only way out of this was to take his own life. The fact that he felt so down, the fact that he felt so miserable and horrible that he couldn't even hold on an extra two hours to make it to his graduation, that shows just how badly beaten down he was. That shows just how much control she had over him. That shows just where his mental state was. And again, even though this particular day she did try to stop him, the months and months of abuse that just intensified in the days leading up to the graduation is what caused him to take his own life. So on Thursday, December 23rd, 2021, Ng Young stood in front of a judge and she did accept responsibility for Alexander's death by pleading guilty to involuntary manslaughter. She was sentenced to two and a half years of jail time with a 10 year sentence of probation. The first five years of probation are to be supervised, though she may request probation in a different jurisdiction. And then the remaining five years of her probation will be unsupervised. She was also ordered to complete 300 hours of community service, 100 hours per year for three years. She, of course, was also ordered to participate in mental health therapy with a licensed clinician. The assistant district attorney read a statement from Alexander's family saying, quote, May 20th, 2019 was to be a celebration of graduation and beginning of his productive life. But instead of him moving forward into the world, planning and enjoying the next steps, we, his family, abruptly found ourselves planning and attending his funeral. It was very painful on the drive back home. We bear no feelings of anger or reprisal. We believe that time will take us through in the moments we mourn and celebrate his life. Obviously, what his family had to go through is absolutely horrific, and I'm so, so very heartbroken for them. No matter what happened, they lost their son so abruptly, which is just so horrendous. I can't even imagine driving all the way up to Boston, Massachusetts from New Jersey and being excited and finally getting to see their son. He was a biochemistry major. That is a really, really hard major. He was going to go on to do some amazing things. Imagine the excitement of finally getting to see him walk across that stage, finally getting to see him getting that diploma only to have to drive home thinking about funeral arrangements, thinking about how they just lost their son. That is literally the biggest change that you can have and it's just heartbreaking and it breaks my heart to think about it. It gives me chills to think about it. I can't even imagine and my heart truly goes out to his family because 
I can't even imagine what they had to go through. But this is one of those cases that's just so, so very difficult to discuss. There may or may not have been any physical abuse. I haven't seen that there was. There always could be behind closed doors. But even if it wasn't, it's still verbal, emotional, and mental abuse, and it's still devastating. It's still just as hard to go through. It still can mess someone up for the rest of their life. Clearly, In Young was in need of her own help. She clearly had insecurity issues and her own mental health problems. I do believe that she has some sort of personality disorder that made her feel so desperate for Alexander's love and attention. I do understand how hurt she must have felt when he went and hung out with his ex behind her back and then, you know, was dishonest about it. That's a gut-wrenching feeling, but she could have broken up with him or she could have agreed to work through it. But instead, she let it upset her and bother her to the point of her becoming possessive and did everything in her power to isolate him and take him away from his friends so that she had complete control. Clearly, this graduation was something that was just brewing under the surface and she was so worried about him seeing his ex and seeing his other friends that she just didn't know what to do. She felt like him seeing these people at the graduation that she would lose control and that, you know, there was nothing that she could do about it. We saw that in her text messages that she was so worried about someone coming up to him and saying something and hugging him and you know you don't have control in that situation she cannot control who he talks to in that situation so clearly that was something that was really getting to her something that she didn't want to happen it's something that clearly she needed the control she needed to have the control and this was bothering her so much because she wouldn't have the control for the day so because of this because she was losing control and felt like there was nothing else that she could do she just tried to make him feel as horrible as possible to again control his actions. The argument of whether or not she deserves jail time and how much jail time she deserves is definitely an interesting one and I'm really looking forward to hearing what all of you guys think about it. You guys probably know at this point that I'm not very sympathetic towards abusers and I feel the same way here. It is not okay to constantly threaten your own life and use your own well-being as a weapon. It's abusive. It traps someone. It's very clear that this is the part of his life that caused him to take his own life. Again, I understand that some of you might say, well, to parents, of course, he seemed mentally strong and driven. A lot of parents don't actually know what's going on behind the scenes, and I totally agree with that. But all of his friends, everyone who knew him said that he normally was this very strong, confident person. And then all of a sudden, once he started dating In Young, that's... That's what they point to as being the moment that his mental health deteriorated. So I think it's pretty clear in this case, there weren't really other things that were contributing to it. Yes, he had a difficult major. He was probably very stressed, but this is supposed to be a very exciting time in his life. He was done with his coursework. He was working in research, which is very difficult. But again, you're done with your coursework. That's so exciting. And looking forward to this graduation should be one of the happiest things in someone's life. But instead, he was dealing with this relationship behind the scenes. He was dealing with all of this that was making it very difficult to just have good mental health and to go about his life in a happy way. So yes, I do think that this relationship is what caused his mental health to deteriorate. I think that is why he took his own life and I do think that she deserves to take responsibility for it. But at the end of the day, they both needed help. I don't think In Young deserves to spend her entire life behind bars. I know some of you will disagree, and honestly, I don't know if I think two and a half years is long enough. I think at least five years would be long enough for her to actually pay for the trauma that she put Alexander and his family through while working to better her own mental health so that this doesn't happen again. Again, this is such a tough case because no, she didn't lay her hands on him to actually cause his death but her words did, her abuse did. He took his own life because of her and what he went through because of her words and her actions, and she does need to take responsibility for that. But again, she's in jail, she pled guilty, she knows what she did, and she's doing time for it. At the end of the day, Alexander lost his life. He had so, so much going for him. He was clearly such a bright young man who was going to do amazing things with his life. And now he's gone 
and it's devastating. As I do with most cases like this, I will provide resources down below for anyone who may be experiencing any sort of domestic abuse or mental health crisis. But either way, that is all I have for today's video. I'm really looking forward to reading what you guys all have to say in the comments. I think this is gonna be a really interesting discussion. Do you think that she got enough jail time or do you think she deserves a much longer sentence? Or do you think she deserves no jail time at all because she didn't technically kill him? Let's discuss all of this in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to go ahead and follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to send the suggestions over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.